uh, EMC, I mean, para that signals generated by any electric or electronic or radio equipment, it is nearly impossible to completely um, make interferences uh, um, disappear. So um, the growing menace also of interference is due to the increasingly dense and complex radio environment. Um, the, the technology is evolving. Um, the distribution table is changing because there are new users, uh, new frequency bands, so new neighbors, which uh, may make new uh, conflicts between neighbors. And, and also it's very important also to, to have a better digital terrestrial coverage by wireless technologies. There is an increase in uses, but also an increase in users and types of users, like you have been talking about verticals, and uh, also people using frequencies, which I said free frequencies without um, individual license, but still there are some um, uh, rules to apply. Uh, so to prevent um, the risk of interference. And also it is um, very easy to find jammers on e-web services. And so I put a special slide on the case of jammers, um, wireless uh, mobile uh, communication jammers, that's GPS jammers. And, and this is really um, a, a real problem, especially GNSS jammers that people would use, for example, in their car because they don't want their employer uh, to track their vehicle. And at the same time, they are making a lot of problems because GNSS signals are very, very uh, low. And it's very easy to jump at a large, um, um, uh, in, in a large space around just with a very small jammer of 10 euros or $10. Um, so for that, the I, um, INFS response is kind of policing the spectrum. It's police of the radio waves. Uh, because it is important to master the electromagnetic space as important as to secure uh, the physical space or to secure the digital space. So in France, INFR has, has got the role of planning, managing, and also controlling the spectrum, the whole spectrum frequencies. And uh, control is, um, um, in fact, um, two different things. It's uh, make sure that, that the use is compliant with the regulations and also handling and eliminating any interference uh, that might occur. Um, just um, about our legal framework about interferences in France, they are considered as an offense and you may in some cases, um, they can be punished by a penalty of imprisonment and, and, and a fine. Uh, in fact, the judge will decide, of course, and we can also um, put a, a tax for intervention. Uh, jammers also are completely forbidden in France, even the possession, and it is the same um, sanctions which are applicable. Um, so INFR rules uh, in spectrum monitoring and enforcement are described in, sorry? Yeah, I described in our um, postal code. Um, it's, our missions are, both preventive and curative. Um, so preventive is inspection of radio stations, of uh, inspection of radio networks, control of HF frequencies, and curative actions is uh, to cure uh, and to handle the interference cases that are reported to us. But we also um, do some education and awareness raising operations because we think that it is important for prevention mostly to make the promotion of the correct use of frequencies. Uh, we are um, about 300 employees in INFR and about 120 are in the spectrum monitoring directorate and in fact they are also spread with a very strong territorial presence so that they can intervene on the field um, as you can see in this map, um, the agents who intervene for um, controlling are eligible and sworn, and they can report facts to the public prosecutors. Um, we, um, of course, for controls, we have um, many types of equipment we, for different bands of frequencies, different uses, and we have uh, uh, both fixed transportable, mobile, measuring and localization equipment. We have also a central database uh, where we put all the recording of the measurements we've made. And also we can control and, and have access from this database to other database 
with um, the um, different stations which have been allowed in France. Um, being uh, able to, 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 um, to respond to the growing menace, uh, to the growing menace of interference because of the more dense use of frequencies and, and the evolution of technology means that we have to maintain continually, to reinforce, to innovate in the means to, of policing the spectrum. That means analyzing the menaces, but also long-term investments in equipment, um, also changing methods, also training our control agents and, and be vigilant about the legal um, the legal ground on which we work to see if it is correct it is um, sufficient or if we have to to try to get a better legal um, uh, ground for 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 controlling uh, it is also important we try to foster as as much as we can partnership with other administrations um, to 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 gather the the, the different uh, capacities um, I will try to be quick because I, then I, I have uh, some slides about different kinds of um, evolutions of our equipment and methods um, that we, we have um, had to do. And maybe I'm already late, I don't know, just tell me. Um, so I, I go quick, we, uh, for localization, um, uh, we, we, we work on um, 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 TDOA technology in plus of AOA. Uh, for GNSS interference, we, we work a lot to find um, specific sensors for detecting GNSS jammers that we can put on the side of roads, for example, for jammers on board vehicles. Uh, for networks, um, we have to now um, have to find in plus of the spectrum um, uh, a lot of information about the cell ID for operators or SSID or MAC address for airlines. So we need new equipment and, and software. Uh, for spectrum monitoring, we also have a project about using drones, but now it's more than a project because we use it for site and uh, inspection and stations inspections. But we work also um, to innovate, to see if we can make measurements with drones. So it's uh, the subject, the project is also going on. And uh, we have to monitor higher frequencies. I think everybody has to monitor higher frequencies. So that's also a big issue to find equipment which uh, uh, allows us to do that. And we also look at, um, at using drones so that we can go in the microwave link when it is a very high uh, frequency. You have to be very near to get, uh, to get information and drones seem to be interesting, but we need the specific equipment uh, that will uh, be able to measure. Um, for 5G, we have been um, working on experiments and now 5G is uh, deployed in France in the 3.5 gigahertz, but also in other bands, not yet in the higher bands, 26 gigahertz band on which we work only on experimentations now. Um, so it is important to, to, to get uh, the good equipment and methods and also analyzing the frame synchronization of 5G because it is very uh, important for 5G. Uh, Non-synchronization may lead to interference on problems. Um, for, as for preventive actions, um, after I presented the equipment and innovation preventive actions, we have we have doing uh, different kinds of prevention. Uh, we uh, first control the HF band, so we have a big antenna field and a specific center, which we call uh, um, internal center in, in Rambouillet, uh, and also with a fixed direction finders network, interministerial network. Uh, we, we do have some uh, fixed station radio ergonometers in France, which can um, be used for uh, radio navigation, for example, um, interference or for checking these bands. And we can add to them transportable direction finders. Uh, we, we do, as I said, controlling conformity of the radio stations and networks, uh, also with the use of drones to see the different antennas on, on, the, on, on big sites. Um, we, uh, for space radio stations, we use a MOU um, with LIHI, which is a station in Germany. So it's a MOU signed by various actors in Europe. Um, to help us for that. And uh, we also control uh, radio equipment on ships. 
so we do a lot of different things, um, um, which are all important for preventing um, interference in this case of ship for um, securing the security of, of, of the navigators. Um, and we also control the radio equipment market, which is a control a posteriori based on the, a, a huge directive, which is the red directive. Um, on the on the other side, uh, uh, we unfortunately may have some some um, experiment, uh, some interference, uh, um, and and then we intervene to clear the disturbance when we are um, when we um, when an interference is reported sorry to us, uh, we uh, look for the causes of interference and the person responsible because it is an infraction in front. It is a um, it is a uh, illegal and we can uh, apply um, a tax, but also we can uh, send the issue and the matter to the courts. So it's quite important. Um, it's, uh, I explained the, 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 the different penalties which are possible in this case. Um, we also um, handle interference in case of major events where we also do the, the coordination of frequencies and we prepare of course for the Olympic and Paralympic games. And we will need people from all over the world to help us for that. <laughs> um, for, from all agencies, or so maybe from your agency would be nice. Um, so just to explain a few cases of interference, and, and I don't think I have time to go into that, but it's uh, maybe to, to initiate discussions uh, we could have uh, later on or any questions we will have. Uh, first, one big case we have is repeaters that people use for repeating mobile signals without the authorization of operator, operators. It's a big um, issue, a lot of cases of interference. And I, I don't know if in your country you have also this problem of indoor mobile connectivity. Um, and it's, um, it's really um, an issue because its interference are very, very often due to that. We have also the problem of um, uh, weather radars, which uh, sometimes are interfered by airlines in the 5 gigahertz um, because the equipment are not compliant or people have uh, maybe changed something in the software. This is something which is very hard to, um, to handle. Uh, a lot of cases with EMC uh, parasites. I put on the left side very small and also we, uh, we have um, in our newsletter, we explain um, different cases and unfortunately, it's only in French yet, <laughs> but I've put the links. Uh, we also, for example, have cases uh, on maritime frequencies. We also have interference affecting other security services like fire um, firefighters. We had a case, it was two, um, in fact, um, the case with another firefighter antenna 160 kilometers away, and we use our fixed network to find it. And uh, we have also, of course, general um, aviation interference um, by radio FM. And uh, uh, I've put a lot of things about GNSS jammers and GNSS interference um, and, and jammers in general, because uh, it's a really um, uh, um, an issue because it's usually making a, a, a really big um, interference case. Um, we had a very uh, huge media coverage for our last case we put in our newsletter, and I think it's good for prevention. It's about uh, um, in Clermont-Ferrand, uh, it was um, the person who was using um, a jammer, uh, mobile and Wi-Fi jammer, he said, because he didn't want his neighbors to use his uh, Wi-Fi, and he was um, interfering with 24 uh, base stations. So it was really a big issue, and and um, it was um, it was in a district not very nice, and we had to intervene with the police, and the police came with a lot of people, so it was quite impressive. Uh, GNSS is really something we uh, we focus on, on, on protecting, because GNSS is used by so many applications, the signals. And in fact, when you interfere with GNSS, you um, a lot of applications don't get either um, timing inter, um, information or positioning information. And it's very, very, um, it can be uh, very critical for some services. Uh, we have cases which are very difficult and we use the help of the police because when jammers are on board vehicles, we don't ourselves stop vehicles and it can be tricky. Uh, so we had a, a lot of cases um, which uh, 
how we bought it and I explained a few. Um, usually, usually it is the general um, aviation service which is which has a problem, but it can also uh, be um, uh, in, in this case, it was in fact a, a very high tech company who was having a problem with the Genesis interface. In this case, it was caused by an internet triple play box internet access box which was uh, having uh, um, making um, some interference because it was emitting emis spurious emissions and uh, one last case with also gps jammer looking like a usb key so it's going, getting more and more tricky so um because of all that we also want to uh, to 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 address in fact um ed educational and awareness raising actions um, because um, the importance of securing the, the spectrum is does not only concern radio expert, it concerns everybody. Um, everybody is using frequencies, sometimes free frequencies, or sometimes you have new actors, new um, who have, are not spectrum experts, but they really need to know what they can do, what they cannot do. So it is important to limit the risk of interference to um, to um, give some information on the regulations applicable. So we do diverse the educational actions, leaflets, web internet. We also do um, every month a new, um, we say l'enquête uh, de la NFR, so an investigation every month to explain a case and to explain why it was jammed, what, pe what people are, may, may have as sanctions and, and the regulations that they have to apply. So um, really securing frequencies is really something which is um, for everybody because it, it is a, a policing of the spectrum is really part of the security, digital security, but also security for all the applications. It is important for the continuity of um, economic, um, private or public application and services. And um, so it is, um, we, we believe it is really important to make all the users aware of issues, to make professional users uh, of frequencies also more aware so they can also be more resilient and uh, so we seek to develop a culture of the security of the radio spectrum like there is a cyber security culture thank you very much i hope i was not too long <laughs>